Okay, let's talk about the envelope generator on the Korg monologue. Now, if we think back to the mini log, we had envelope generators for the filter and the amp, and they were ADSR. If we look here, we can see that on the monologue, it's only attack decay. So right off the bat, you look at that and you say, oh, wow, that's quite a limitation. And I have to say, like when I think of certain uh, synths that had similar envelope generator situations, like the Moog Sonic 6, for example, you look at that AR and you think, oh no, I can't do much with that. And it's true. Uh, usually you are really limited if you don't have the ability to, you know, control the release or sustain or whatever. But on this synthesizer, don't be fooled. Uh, Basically, instead of really limiting it, Korg has streamlined the envelope generator situation and made it more immediate and kind of easier to understand. When you have an envelope generator for your amp and you have one for your filter, if you're applying the filter one, let's face it, the envelope generator for your amp actually becomes somewhat less useful because the filter in some ways controls not only timbre, but also amplitude in the frequencies that it lets through. Let's talk about this envelope generator. I'm gonna show you why it's a great idea. Okay, the envelope generator. We have an attack knob, a decay knob, and we have this switch, and the switch is awesome, and here's why. Okay, first, we have it set to this first setting, and in the first setting, you can see an attack slope and a decay slope. So you can assume that the attack and the decay are adjustable. I'm turning up the decay, so the, the, the rate at which the sound decays and releases, uh, the decay and the release are together on this synthesizer. So it says decay, but it's also the release. The longer, the higher you turn this up, the longer your decay release is going to be. Now, this setting is gonna go through its decay slash release no matter how long you hold the note, watch. I'm gonna turn the decay down really low and just hold it. Doesn't matter that I'm holding the key right now. It's gonna go through attack and decay. And that's just how this setting is. It's a one shot setting. It's a pluck setting. It's a rhythm setting. So uh, we can also adjust the attack. We can make backward sounds by turning decay all the way down. You can make nice long string like attack and decay sounds. Of course, this is where we're gonna run into return to zero. This is a return to zero synthesizer. So with each new key stroke you get, the uh, it's going to reset the envelope and you're gonna start at zero. So it doesn't make it have that sort of legato sound that you might be expecting from other monophonic synthesizers. So it's just a thing you're gonna have to get used to. But uh, anyway, we'll get back to the envelope here. So you can set long attacks and long decays. Okay, and so that is our first setting, the attack decay setting. Now, let's look at the second setting. In that setting, we can see an attack slope, then a line, and then a decay slope. Guess what that means? That line is your sustain level. Now, this is basically an automated sustain. So, unlike some synthesizers that have AR envelopes, uh, this one actually allows you to have sustain, which is great because sometimes we wanna hold a note, right? Okay, so, as long as I hold this note, it will continue to happen. Then I let go and it's go to, gonna go to the decay. So I don't know if this uh, drawing is up to technical specifications, but to be honest, it sounds like sustain is set very high and your attack goes up to the sustain level and then stays at the sustain level as long as you hold the note. And then once you let go of the note, it goes to the decay level. That's my guess and the decay is actually the release in this instance. But unlike the last setting, if I hold a note, it holds. 
And to be honest, on a normal ADSR envelope, you have the ability to set the attack and decay. And so the attack can go way up high to the loudest the synthesizer is going to be. And then it can decrease, then it'll hit the decay and it'll decrease to the, to the sustain level. So you can get a little more variety in change over time with an ADSR. But so often I find myself setting the sustain high enough that you can't really discern the, de the decay stage. So that's kind of the shortcut that Korg has put in here is you still get the outcome you want, you get an, the attack you want, you get the, the ability to hold the note and then let go of the note and you have the uh, release slash decay sound. And to be honest, you can, uh, you know, switch between these for your various uses. So it's not like um, you're locked in at all. You can actually, in the midst of your playing, be switching between these two envelope types if you wanted to. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now we get down to this one. Basically, what this is telling us is, here, let's listen. Let's see if you can tell. Uh, and look, yes, it is a gate setting. Basically it is saying, okay, the envelope now is no longer controlling the amp. And instead the amp is being opened and closed by when a note is activated and when a note is released. So that's just your gate setting, which is great because that then frees the envelope generator up to be used in other ways, which is awesome. I mean, that's very helpful. If you're only gonna have one envelope generator, having the ability to switch it to gate, switch the amp to gate, and then direct the envelope generator where you'd like it to go is great. Because like I mentioned before, once you start applying an envelope generator to a filter, it's going to affect the sound in a way that makes the amp settings actually kind of somewhat obsolete. So, um, they have not left you out in the cold. This is really great. It's great that there's a gate setting. So then that frees the envelope generator up to do what? Well, we have an intensity knob here and we have a switch here and we have several settings. The first setting is pitch. And I love this because we can actually see what this setting is doing to the frequency in the screen. Watch. When the waves are close together, it's a high frequency. When the waves are far apart, it's a low frequency. And we can actually watch that happen. That's fun. Now you might be saying to yourself, uh, why would I want to direct the envelope to pitch? Uh, you just get this ridiculous sound. Well, it's for sirens. Don't you want to make sirens set? No. Uh, really, though, it's really helpful when you're making percussion, percussion sounds or you have really complex effects with high modulation going on to change the frequency of both oscillators over time will allow you to do really interesting effects. And certainly it's necessary if you're going to do percussive sounds. And so I always, I've always been sad that so many popular synthesizers didn't allow you to direct the envelope to the pitch for the purposes of making effects or doing rhythm sounds. So this is, it was really great that they have done that here in this instance. <laughs> 